Hi friends, I am so excited about today's video because I'm going to demonstrate a technique that I first uh, showed on my YouTube channel five years ago and to this day it's one of my most popular videos. And yes, you see rubber bands. This technique is the rubber band technique. So when I filmed this video five years ago, I had no idea how popular it would be. Uh, I had hardly any supplies with me. I was actually in the process of moving to British Columbia, which ultimately I didn't do I ended up staying in Nova Scotia um, but at the time I was staying with my aunt I didn't have many supplies and I was making swaps for a trip I had earned with Stampin' Up so I was trying to be creative and the rubber technique um, was what I came up with so I'm using a block similar to the one I used in my original video now I will post the link down below um, so I'm just taking a block and I'm simply wrapping on rubber bands and I have different um, widths of bands as well there are my rubber bands now also in my original video I used markers to cover these bands because I had no ink pads with me today I'm going to stamp with ink pads my card bases are whisper white and I have some sticky notes also in my original video um, I was using note paper because I didn't have any sticky notes with me so I am lining up the crease of my card onto my Stampin' Up! grid paper and this ensures that it's straight and I'm covering about half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of that Whisper White. Now I'm going to put on the second piece. Okay, I think I want that to be a bit wider. So this is pretty much casing my own card from that original video, but I'm going to also demonstrate in this video a couple of fun variations. Okay, so there we go. Everything's all masked. So I am taking my old olive ink pad. This is my all-time fairy favorite green. Love this. So I use ink pad instead of the markers as I did in that original video and now I'm just stamping down. So I'm creating a really fun background using these rubber bands. Now I'm taking my Seaside Spray, love this color, and instead of a sponge in the original video, I'm using my sponge brayer. Okay, and I'm just going to go right up the center. neat background. I don't know why I didn't do another video on this sooner because even in my original video I'm sharing the possibilities of embossing and different things and when I was watching that video today I thought oh my gosh I really want to try that. <laughs> so that's that's why I'm doing another video because this is such a great technique and there's so many ways you can step it up. And I am using a new stamp set for this card. This is called Positive Thoughts because this stamp is very similar to the fern image that I used in the original video and this will be lovely on this card. So let's pull that out and I'm bringing in my Stamparatus. copying this from that original card that I made. I used my black memento in my original video because I was using a photopolymer stamp. But because this is red rubber, I'm going to go ahead and use my stays on. Now I could use either or, but when you're using photopolymer stamps, you want to use your memento ink instead of stays on. I really love uh, my black stays on. And have you ever smelt it? It smells like almond extract. 
really, really um, delicious smelling. So <laughs> it's a bonus of using the stays on. Okay. And of course, with the Stamparatus, I can stamp this image again if I want to make it darker. I think it looks pretty great. But you know what? Let's go ahead and re-stamp this. Make it even darker. Oh my gosh, yes. So nice. Now I'm going to move this. I'm not going to clean it because I'll probably use it later. And I'm going to take the hugs, prayers, and love. Now I'm taking the butterfly image from the same stamp set and I'm just going to put it right there. And I'm going to ink this also with my black. Okay, so I'm using my Stamparatus again. And I have a piece of scrap, Whisper White. And I'm going to put the butterfly right here. Now we do have uh, dies that just came out that coordinate with this stamp set. And I have ordered them. I don't have them yet, but I'm very excited to get them. And there is a die that will cut this butterfly. But I am going to uh, cut it out by hand. But before I do that, I want to color my butterflies. I'm going to pull this in. And you can see that because I had so much ink on my block, when I was rolling my blue, it actually rolled some of that green into that. So I've kind of got a bluish green um, background. So pretty. But I'm going to take my seaside spray and dab some of that onto the block. Pick that up with my aqua painter and just add some color. Same thing with this butterfly. And just cut this out. I'm not going to worry about cutting out the antennas. That's why I stamped the first butterfly on there first. You know what? I'm not going to worry about cutting his little body out either. So I'm going to cut right around that. And I'm going to put that on with the glue dot. And I'm taking my fine tip glue and I'm going to add some Dazzling Diamonds glitter to the butterfly. Whoops, and I just had a big blob fall out. I'm going to try to lift some of that glue up. Really didn't want that much glue on there. Okay. So there's my finished card. And on the original video, I actually put a butterfly on the fern that I used. So I did it a little bit differently super super pretty so now I'm going to do another card using the same technique so I'm just going to mist this block with water and wipe it off I keep this rag in my stamp room I use it all the time so this time before I stamp with my rubber bands I'm going to sponge the color on I'm going to use Rococo Rose Sponge it on. I love Rococo Rose. Now I'm taking my embossing buddy because I'm going to use Versamark on those rubber bands. So I'm just tapping all over this open area. Alright, ink this up and stamp it down exactly the same way that I did in the first card. I know it's hard to see where I'm stamping because of course it's clear ink 
but that's just going to add to the surprise when I add my embossing powder. Okay, let's see how this is going to look. I'm going to remove these. Okay, I'm using my gold embossing powder. Because I didn't use my embossing buddy on the white, I do have some powder where I don't want it. So I'm just taking a paintbrush and wiping that off. Okay, I'm going to set this with my heat tool. Not pretty. Oh my gosh, such a gorgeous background. I'm just thinking in our celebration brochure, we have this stamp set. It's actually part of the bundle, the Power of Hope bundle, and it comes with the embossing folder. Now, I don't have this yet, but wouldn't this stamp set be beautiful with this particular background? So nice. But let's figure out what I'm going to do with this instead. Okay, I have decided to use the lovely lily pad and the coordinating dies for this card. I'm going to stamp with this flower, and I am, again, rubbing my paper with the embossing buddy. Put my stamp down and I'm inking it with my Fursa mark. Embossing this with my gold powder again. To color this, I'm using my Melon Mambo as well as the Rococo Rose. So I'm going to start with the Rococo Rose first. Putting some ink on my block. And again, I do that with the new style of ink pads because the older style, these are easier to squeeze and get ink on the top, whereas these ones I find a little bit more trickier. So I just use this technique and use my aqua painter. so pretty. I'm going to run this through my Big Shot using the coordinating die. So there's my die cut lily and I do want to add one of the green little lily pads that go underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp and then die cut that. So because these stamps are reversible I am going to first stamp the solid side and I'm stamping this with my old olive. Then I'm cleaning this. You want to make sure when you're using reversible stamps that your blocks and your stamps are really clean or they're not going to stick. Go over top with my embossing buddy. And my first mark. We I'm going to go cut this with my coordinating die. So these are the dies that match the lovely lily pad stamp set. It's a great variety. I can't wait to use this one. I haven't used that one yet. But these are beautiful, beautiful dies. And of course, this whole set you can earn for free during celebration. So that's pretty darn cool. So now I have my, um, my lily pad and the flower. I'm going to set them aside because I first want to stamp my sentiment. So, I'm going to rub over the entire piece with the embossing buddy. Okay, I have chosen my Peaceful Moments stamp set. This is a new stamp set and one that I recently got. I'm going to use this one here. These are the moments we'll look back on with joy. Normally I put all my stamps together in one swoop. I just haven't done that with this one yet. So let's take off the label. And put my stamp on. There we go. Inking it with my first mark because I'm going to emboss this in gold. So elegant. Okay, let's put these on. Now I'm going to add some pearls for a bit of dimension. Put one there. And, hmm. And 
there is the finished card. So that's the rubber band technique with some embossing. So you can imagine if you used white embossing powder instead of the gold or silver. I mean, if, imagine if you did this at Christmas time with blues and whites or silver and put a snowflake here. Oh my goodness. Don't you find that once you start stamping, you just come up with a thousand ideas? I know I do, and it's just, it's so much fun. Okay, so here's the first card that I made. Again, very similar to my card on the original video that I did five years ago. Here's the card that I just finished. And that's with the gold embossing and the same card layout. And now I'm going to show you eight more cards. Yes, eight more cards using the rubber band technique. So this is a really simple card. This card is just using the rubber band technique on Whisper White cardstock and one ink pad. This is Granny Apple Green. The stamp set is from Hoot Hoot Hooray. This is a great card for beginner stampers, stampers who don't have a whole lot of supplies, and even for those of us who have been stamping for quite a while and need to make a quick card. These were the types of cards that I used to make a lot when I was first starting out. Just a simple card with a bit of matting. And the color on the flower is Rococo Rose with a little bit of crushed curry and uh, Dazzling Diamonds in the center. So here's another cute card. Now this one's using a new stamp set from our mini catalog. It's called Special Someone and Stampin' Up! just released coordinating dies. So the rubber band technique on this one, it's exactly the same as this one, but the difference is I used additional colors. So on this one I used uh, Crumb Cake, Early Espresso, and Mossy Meadow. Now I'm going to show you the next card which uses the piece that I cut out in the center of this one. And here it is here. Now what I did to this is I punched out the leaf punch from the center of the circle and put it down here. And I also covered both pieces with Versa Mark after I did the rubber band technique and embossed them with clear so that I get a shiny look. And I also stamped the coordinating stamp on the center and embossed that in clear as well. So it's got some uh, embossed resisting technique in the center. The early espresso layer has been run through the Bake Shot. I used the Layer Leaves 3D embossing folder. And I also did a light spritz on the early espresso layer using the Champagne Shimmer Mist paint. And the Just Breathe sentiment is from the Colorful Seasons stamp set. Now here's another one that I did and this time I used a circle instead of the original where I did the masking so that it's a rectangular shape. So in the center I sponged on Highland Heather and then stamped with my rubber band um, using Highland Heather as well. And the flowers and the sentiment are from the Forever Blossoms stamp set. And then I just added Rich Razzleberry um, and some more Highland Heather to the flowers, some sequins, and some pearls in the center. And then to finish the card, I used some Wink of Stella, clear Wink of Stella, just on the flowers and the leaves. Now on this card, I used the Emboss Resist Technique. Um, I stamped my rubber bands first and then embossed them in uh, white powder and then I sponged on the color for the background. So the bottom is Pool Party, then Mint Macaron, Soul Saffron and Calypso Coral. I added a sentiment, punched it out, some ribbon and a few rhinestones to finish it off. This card was fun. For this card, I used our pigment sprinkles. So I sprinkled on a couple of the powders onto my Whisper White cardstock, misted it lightly with water, and then used my aqua painter to blend them together. And then I stamped on the rubber bands and embossed them in white. 
And then I used my stitch label dies on another piece of Whisper White and glued that on top. And then I used my Sailing Home bundle for the sailboat and the sentiment. This card is actually one of my favorites. So I did it the same way as this background, but I did a bigger piece. I used more colors, as you could tell, embossed the rubber bands in white, and then I cut them into three quarter inch strips and then glued them onto basic black. And then my sentiment from the Forever Blossoms, which I embossed on black with white and cut. And then the coordinating dies, the cherry blossom dies, are what I used. I used petal pink cardstock and some vellum, and then some silver foil for the centers. And it turned out really, really pretty. Here is the last card. And I used the rubber bands directly onto gold foil cardstock and embossed it in gold. And then I cut out the gold foil with my stitched Be Mine heart dies. And then we'll just open this up and that's how it looks on the inside. And then I used our new Parisian dies for this black swirl and I added some gold sequins. And the sentiment that reads all of me loves all of you is from our Forever Blossoms stamp set. Now let's take a look at the front. You'll see I have the rubber band um, texture on here. So I just stamped the rubber bands all over the front with first a mark and embossed it in clear. So there you go my friends, 10 cards using the rubber band technique. I'm so glad that I redid this video after doing it so long ago. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video as I always do. I hope you've gotten lots of inspiration and lots of great ideas on how you can use something as simple as rubber bands to create a really, really neat background for your cards. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. Then you're notified every time I upload a new video. Have a great day and happy stamping.